It's Monday, February 28, 2011. I'm Red Blanchard, and a lot of people have been asking me to do a sort of a synopsis of my entire radio career. Well, I'm going to try to put that together in just a few minutes here. Hope I don't leave anything important out. But number one, when I started out, it was right after the war. I'd been a ham radio operator, and I had worked in the radio repair shop. And I'd been interested in the technical side of radio, but I'd also been a musician and interested in showbiz as well. So anyway, after I got out of the Army, I worked at this radio shop in Riverside, California. They had a local station there called KPRO. Well, KPRO was a 1,000-watt station on 1440 KC. The owner of the station, a man named of William Gleason, or I mean Willard, sorry, not Willard, not William, it was Willard. Bill Gleason, we called him, if you had the nerve. Anyway, <laughs> he said if I would go out and get an FCC license to work in a broadcast station, he would give me a job. So I went out and bought a book called a Radio Operator, Questions and Answers. And I studied that book for two or three weeks, and then I went down to the FCC and took the test and got the license. And then I got the job working there, which the one person would do everything. You had the transmitter in the same room with you, <clears throat> and a microphone hanging there, and turntables to play records, a microphone for announcing, and also uh, a network coming in from L.A. called the ABC Network. So there I was, starting out in radio at KPRO. Well, KPRO let me do a lot uh, on my own. They said I could have my own show and do anything I wanted. So I started an afternoon record program called the 1440 Club, and people would call up on the phone and guess the name of a record, and then I'd give them a prize, like a lunch at some restaurant or something like that. However, the problem with the KPRO was that their financial situation was really bad. And they were running out of money, and the paychecks were bouncing. So I got the habit of watching the bookkeeper, the bookkeeper that handled all the money. When she'd go to the bank, I'd go right behind her, stand in line, and she'd deposit the bank's money, and I would go, I'd be the next one in line, and I'd take it out to cash my paycheck before it was all gone. <laughs> it worked pretty good and I kept up with my paychecks fairly well that way. However, eventually I saw the way the wind was blowing and I decided to go get a job in a bigger station. Everybody wants to work in a bigger station. So I went down to San Diego and uh, happened to land uh, a spot on KCBQ, the CBS station in San Diego. And the owner of that station was a guy named, uh, oh nuts, why can't I remember that name? Chuck something. Anyway, he gave me my own show, too. He said, uh, you can come in here on, uh, at midnight, Friday and Saturday night, do anything you want. But um, I told over the air that I wasn't allowed to have an audience for my show, but if somebody showed up, they wouldn't be thrown out. So it wasn't very long before people started to crowd in there and look through the glass at me doing the show, which I would play records, and started out with the same sort of stuff that I later did at uh, San Francisco and other cities. I started doing uh, comedy sketches, uh, imitations, things of that nature. So I worked at KCBQ for about a year there in 1950. And as a matter of fact, on the outside of the station, I also worked as an announcer at the racetrack. They had an automobile racetrack, I believe it was called Lakeside, and uh, they had these hot rod races, and I'd go over there and announce the races. And on my website, redblanchard.com, there's some pictures of ads that the racetrack took out uh, telling about how I was going to be the announcer for their races. That was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed car racing. Did that for a while, maybe six months or so. But then, uh, strangely enough, uh, Bill Gleason from KPRO called me up and said, we're going on a nationwide network, and if you'll come back here to work for me, I'll be sure to put you on a nationwide hookup. Well, that sounded great. It was going to be called the Liberty Network, and the, the Liberty Network was already operating out of Dallas, Texas, and the guy that run that or ran that was named Gordon McClendon. He used to recreate baseball games, and that was the total network he had of him, himself 
recreating baseball games, which were carried on KPRO. But if I would just come back to KPRO, I would have my own show and it would go out on that Liberty Network. So anyway, he talked me into it. I quit KCBQ, which was a good station. I wish I'd have stayed there now because who knows what might have happened. But as it turned out, everything worked out for me in the end anyway. No matter what happened in the future, whenever I got fired or needed a job, I could always find one. So I go back to Riverside, and sure enough, the nationwide hookup did not materialize. I think I might have taped one program. They sent the tape back to Dallas, Texas, and, and actually fed it out on their network from Dallas, and that was just a one-time shot, and that was it. So anyway, after a while, I realized that KPRO was just the same as it had been before, uh, the bouncing paychecks and so on. So I went out and started looking around, and I wound up with a job up in Las Vegas. A uh, station up there, a CBS station again. This time it was KLAS. And at that time, Las Vegas was a sleepy little town, 30,000 people. They had three radio stations, uh, that is three AM, and one FM, and no TV. And again, the owner of the station took a liking to me. He gave me my own show, which I put on the air every morning from 6 to 7. I'd come in there and open up the station, turn on the transmitter, uh, which was on a little building out on Charleston Boulevard. Probably long gone by now, but that's where the station was and the tower too. 250 watts of gigantic power. So I had this show on every morning from 6 to 7, and then at 7 o'clock they would switch over to the nationwide network out of New York. Well, I only worked there for two or three months, <clears throat> and uh, in the meantime, I had been sending out, uh, not tapes, but recordings, 16-inch uh, acetate recordings of my shows in San Diego. I'd been sending them to a station up in San Francisco, uh, an even bigger CBS station, KCBS. They had 5,000 watts with a transmitter in San Jose. So anyway, I was in Las Vegas about three months, and all of a sudden the phone rang one day, and it's the program director at KCBQ, I mean KCBS, and he said, uh, we've got a job here. If you want it, uh, report right away, and we'll put you to work. So I had to sign off my job at Las Vegas. The owner of the station was a very nice man, Fred Stoy, S-T-O-Y-E. He said, I realize that this is a mere stepping stone for people with any amount of talent, they're going to go on to a bigger station, and you have my blessing. And he didn't even have to give him two weeks' notice, which I offered to. He said I could leave right away at the end of that week. So I did. And we hitched up our uh, house trailer I was living in, and we drove to San Francisco, and I went to work at KCBS. Well, KCBS's story has been told many times. They, they wrote up articles about it in Time Magazine and Life Magazine. And I stayed there for about four or five years and built up quite a following and quite a program. And on my website today are uh, audio tapes, or let's say audio files you can play. You can play the actual programs from KCBS anytime you want. Just go to redblanchard.com and there they are. <clears throat> well, I lasted up there about four years and then one day all of a sudden I got fired. I don't like to go into a lot of details about why I got fired, but uh, most shows on radio or TV run their course, and at the end, they have to go. Even the best shows around eventually run their course and have to go, and my show had to go, so I went. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I left town almost immediately. Within a week, I had put up the house for sale. The whole family, we all moved down to uh, San Fernando Valley, which had been my home when I grew up. And driving around the San Fernando Valley, we spotted a real estate sign to, to buy a house with a low down payment. And that's what we did. We bought this house with a low down payment. I think it was $400 down for this brand new tract house. And the total price was like twelve five. Now that was in 1955. So uh, quite a difference from today, right? 12.5 for the whole house. And uh, so we moved down there, and naturally I went out around town looking for a job, and I walked into this one station called KFVD, which later became K-pop, 
and uh, they had a weekend job for me. They'd heard about my KCBS work, and so they offered me this weekend job, which I took right away. And I worked there for a while, and eventually wound up with working for several other stations in L.A., until I finally wound up back on CBS again at KNX. Well, KNX is the big CBS powerhouse in, in Los Angeles, and at that time they had all the top shows and the network shows, etc. And again, they gave me my own program, which I was on from 2.30 to 3 every afternoon, and uh, besides uh, holding, holding down a full shift as a staff announcer. So I worked there for a while, too, and then one day... The, the uh, manager of the station got promoted back to New York to be the president of CBS Radio. And the man that stepped in to take his place was a guy named Bob Sutton. Well, Bob Sutton was an evil man. And his idea was to bring in people that he personally hired. And he hadn't hired me, so he decided he was going to make an example. And he brought in somebody from Florida, an unknown quantity, just so that he could say that he picked this guy, and so I had to train him to do my job, and then he was in and I was out. And I belonged to the after union at the time, and they, didn't, they made no effort to help me. They didn't protect my job in any way. They were very glad to take my dues, but the, that's all they would do. And I lost the job, and there I was out on the street again. Well, fortunately for me, I went up and down the streets of Hollywood and managed to find another job right away. And I went over to KFWB, which was having uh, the top 40 operation, the number one station in town, even beating KNX for the ratings. And I worked for KFWB for a while until one day I suddenly got back to KNX again. <laughs> it was kind of funny that, that I got fired and rehired at the same place. After KNX, though, uh, that went for about four or five years. And I wound up, and again, and again I got fired. Oh, I guess I got this kind of out of sequence. I got fired at KNX when that manager went to New York and the program director became the manager. Okay, so anyway, they brought in the guy they liked and I was out. And at that time, I'd already been to KFWB and that was history. So I went down the street again and stopped in at KHJ Channel 9 Television. They also had an AF and F FM radio in the same building. Well, I got a job at, K, uh, at KHJ Television as an engineer. And I had never worked in television, video, or anything like that, but it was easy to pick up. And I started a job that lasted for 13 years. I wound up as a technical director, uh, controlling the, the controls of all their top shows and so forth, and until uh, 1978. By 1978 came along, and. I decided it was time for me to retire. I wasn't very old, but I just felt like retiring because I didn't, I didn't like being an engineer. Let's face it, when you've been in showbiz, when you've been a talent, you don't want to be an engineer. Well, I did it for 13 years to keep my family with groceries and that sort of thing. But at the time, of, by 1978, my children were grown up and I was able to retire. And my wife and I then uh, were able to live independently. Uh, well, we had, you know, we'd saved up some money and had a few uh, uh, real estate investments and things like that. So I've been retired ever since 1978. And here it is 2011. That's quite a long time to sit around and do nothing. Well, doing nothing is what I'm doing right now. I'm sitting here playing with a computer, making videos for the internet, and my radio career is over, I guess. Well, my television career is what you're seeing right now. This is it. I've got a high-definition television system. I hope I put on a decent video. I'm sitting here in front of a green screen, just like they do in commercial TV. And after I record this, I'll be popping in various pictures in the background. I hope they make, you know, have some reference to whatever I'm talking about. So I guess that's in a, my, my career in a nutshell. And this nutshell has run for how long? Um, hmm. Well, it says in the fine print somewhere over there, but I can't read it. <laughs> okay, I'll, uh, I'll figure that out later, and I'll see you some other time in the near future, the next time I think of something to talk about. And so long until then. <laughs>